alarm went off way too early. Once the alarm goes off, it's time to go to work and uh, get my breakfast ready, go get some coffee and, and just go down. And then it's just up to the mercy of the officials when they finally take off. Sudden death is the most unique format in professional fishing. For this round, the first three anglers to reach a predetermined weight will automatically qualify for the championship round. Sudden death round is always what you want to be at, but in reality, it's the toughest round in Major League Fishing because there's a cut weight. You know, you don't get to fish all day. You don't get time to figure things out. You have to make it happen. Lines in seven thirty. Oh, okay, okay, got gotcha. it. Last night, um, not gonna lie, I was kind of anxious. Not nervous, but just anxious to get out there. And I was really just trying to talk to myself and just keep myself calmed down. And it made for a pretty restless night, which isn't typical for me. I'm not a rookie in this game anymore. this morning and um, took a ride into the state park and I'm assuming we're <laughs> gonna put in somewhere here but then we come out on another road and I think we're headed north. You know we leave out this morning and the GPS on the truck is not zoomed out at all. I'm sure the, <laughs> the officials do that on purpose but if we're making all these turns and I don't have a clue I'm so turned around on where we're headed. I was so turned around I didn't even think we were gonna be on you follow this morning. I don't know where we're Pretty sure we're still in the state park when we took a ride. So whoever picked that boat ramp knew somebody, is all I got to say. Because <laughs> it was in the sticks. Well, here we are. I see trees. We're in a forest that has water. Uh, you couldn't really see anything. You know, it's a lot of timber around. You can see the little creek there. Then Randy White came around, gave us the map of where we were, realized that we're up the river. Okay. Yeah, this is yeah. basically the bridge, too. There's a bridge up here. That'll be the cutoff. So we get the map, and we see that the cutoff is at the bridge. So I'm thinking, man, this is going to be great. we got a lot of area. And more important to me, Kalwiki Creek is where I always love to fish. 12 pounds. 12? 12 pounds. All right. Okay, we'll be out in 15 minutes. When they first told us to cut weight at 12 pounds, all I could do was compare it to my previous round, and I'm like, 12 pounds, you know, that's gonna be a lot of weight. I'm thinking, you know, that's obtainable, you know, possibly, um, you know, around noonish. You know, we'll see if it translates to this. This is a different part of the lake, of course. Uh, I think it probably would be better. Should be. I thought that was a little bit light. Um, I would have liked to have seen it heavier. spot chosen for both the launch point and the period break rendezvous was located near a considerable no-wake zone. I think we were all uh, all new to that area and we had a pretty heavy fog and we get to run it and we go by and I look, I'm like, hey, that was a no-wake zone. We launch the boats and Kevin Van Dam decides that uh, he's a better man than me and he's going to run the no-wake zone that I was idling through. So I just jumped it up on pad and I'm not going to let him pass me. I know it's a no-wake zone. I know we shouldn't be running, but he's not going to beat me out there on the water, right? So I'm going to put her to the floor and chase him out. I'm going to try to pass him before we get out of that no-wake zone. I haven't been here in 10 or 15 years and it's foggy and, you know, I mean, you're all ganged up, fired up to go. There's no running. No way! My boat official had to shut us both down, and that's kind of how the day started. Once safely through the no-wake obstacle, the round began with a bang for veteran MLF angler Tim Horton. I go and I look at all the cover. So I'm seeing all of this, what we call bank grass or alligator grass, as it's called here at Lake Eufaula. And I'm thinking, man, that could really be a player. And then I go and I graph a couple of places offshore and I find a school of fish. And they're set up perfect. They're on the bottom in 10, 12 foot of water. And that was early on in the ride around. Lines in, sudden death round one. When I seen that school of fish and it was set up at the right depth, it, it one of my favorite techniques, which is deep cranking. And my first cast on that spot as I'm reeling it down, I felt that rough patch. I felt that rough bottom and then that fish loaded up. All right, yes. Hey, if they're here like this, 
first thing in the morning, it's still a little light. The fish jumps at the boat, swing it in. Man, I'm just on cloud nine. I'm thinking, man, this is exactly what I thought. That 12 pound threshold could go really quick. I'm seeing a lot of shad and stuff popping. I mean, I need to take advantage of this. You know, when it comes time for lines in, I didn't even like where I started. Yeah, I was looking around and I was throwing a spinning rod, just trying to, trying to catch a fish. Well, about the time I was ready to leave, I saw some shad pop. So that gave me the feeling like, man, I didn't really like really anything that I saw that was real great. Let's just throw a buzz bait down these rocks and just see what happens. Stay on there, fish. It's a good one. Yes. I was really surprised my first fish of the morning was a solid fish, and then to follow it up with another one, I think I had a couple of them miss it almost immediately. So I knew it was more than just, maybe let's just get a couple points on the board here. This is something serious, but I figured I'd have to capitalize on it early because once that sun got up, those, that, that whole pattern was gonna go away. So it was definitely like a hurry up and let's get this thing done type of deal. Basically just parallel on the riprap with a buzz bait, then bass were just pushing that shad and then bluegill up against the rocks. And a lot of the bait was really small and I really had to slow down the buzz bait and every now and then one would come up and smoke it. What time is it, 9, 10? Yes sir, you have uh, 50 minutes remaining. You need one pound, 10 ounces. I'm gonna catch one pound, 10 ounces down this stretch, regardless. I, I, I think I'm gonna put it away here. I'm just gonna try to hit some of the real obvious targets as we work our way out of here. This is the type of creek, though, if you could get a bite or two, just to know that there's a few fish in here, you could probably get good in a hurry. I'd settled on a, one of the bigger creeks up there. Unfortunately, we couldn't go up the river far enough. They had it blocked off at a bridge, and the stuff that I had fished in the past was on up past the bridge, and uh, caught a fish fairly quick. I want to say about 20 to 30 minutes in, a, a fairly nice fish. Okay. <laughs> yes. Then went down a little bit farther, found a little bridge, and uh, caught a couple keepers there. So I, I really thought things were gonna go pretty well. I ended up losing a, a fish up there as well. Did I lose him? Son of a gun. Things were not going as smoothly for former Challenge Cup champion Kelly Jordan. With the clock expiring in one minute, he had zero bass logged on the score tracker. No brainer, come fish the rocks on a bridge, that's no brainer. I worked my way down to that bridge. It's the farthest place you can go, but it has riprap. You know, there's probably shad up on that and stuff, and I, I get down there probably with 10 minutes left in the period. I was uh, using a Texas rig worm, 15 pound line, 3 16 ounce weight, and I pitched back in there, and uh, it was, I knew it was my last pitch of the round. It, my, I think my official said I had 30 seconds or something like that. 30 seconds. And I mean, I got him on, and I'm not really rushing him because I got 10 seconds, that's a long time. 10 seconds is plenty of time to get him in the boat. Now I'm gonna sling him right in the boat and catch him. You know, and it was a four plus. 15 seconds. It broke right in front of the handle, just snapped right away. I guess I hit the rod and the rod, you know, maybe crimped to something because I've been using that rod and never had a problem and I didn't even hardly load up at all. It just was an easy break. So something, I don't know if I got, if I hit it with my knee, I don't have any idea. That was a four pounder. That was a four pounder. That was tough. It was real hard because my cameraman and boat official, we talked, they, they think it was a five pounder. They got a good look at it too. I, it was at least a four. It was, I mean, it's a great fish. I'm shaking. Oh, that will light you up. This is pressure. You get the bite finally. I've had another good bite, Lossie. That was a good one. I was just taking my time, come on in. And that was a four pounder. Guess where I'm coming straight to next period. 